Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Friday and welcome to Wicca 202. This month we are acquainting ourselves with one of the more perilous plants that are associated with witches and witchcraft, Belladonna. Before we proceed any further, I want to stress that every part of this plant is toxic to humans, and if you handle it at all, it should be done with the utmost caution. Belladonna is also known as deadly nightshade for good reason, and it is native to woodlands and waste areas in central and north southern Eurasia. It grows between four to five feet. It has dull green leaves, violet or greenish flowers on the leaves or on the forks of branches, and it has shiny berries about the size of a cherry. Its root system is composed of a large tapering root. It does have medicinal properties in the proper formulations and in the proper doses, but again, that is a matter best left to uh, medical professionals. So the magical properties of this plant is associated with the astrological sign of Libra. Uh, the, within the solar system, the planets uh, Saturn and Pluto, its energy is receptive. It's associated with the element of water and the tarot card, the world. Uh, the goddesses it is tied to is Bologna, Circe, Hecate, and Maka. It has the powers to do with the astral realm, calm, darkness, healing, imagination, uh, magic, specifically uh, night magic, visions, witches, and witchcraft. Now, ordinarily, this we've come to the point in the video where we talk about how to make magical use of something, but belladonna is extremely dangerous to use, even though in the past, I mean, people certainly did. But there are still reports of death that are the result of accidental ingestion of belladonna, so this is really nothing to play with, and it would be irresponsible of me to ignore that reality or to pretend that a real witch would use it anyway and how edgy and cool that would make someone. Now, we won't be doing that. We are grown-ups on this channel, and we conduct ourselves accordingly. Moreover, there are viable and there are non-toxic alternatives for things that Belladonna was once used for. And the reason why I bring up learning about this plant at all is because it is part of the historical practice of the craft, and it's important to do one's part to forewarn people about the dangers. So, this brings us to our homework for May 5th to May 11th. Number one, time to do more research. Because of the toxicity of belladonna, it's a good idea to be able to recognize it on site, especially if you intend to collect herbs in the wild. Number two, investigate the medical um, consequences of belladonna ingestion. There are some people who, upon being told that this is a plant best avoided, who will feel a compulsion to go out and do something with it, and perhaps being more aware of the effect that it does have on the human body will help dissuade the more foolhardy. And number three, do some digging and look for the variety of plants that can serve a similar function that belladonna does. Nature generously provides for all of our needs, so we don't need to put our physical well-being unnecessarily at risk just to get a magical job done. So imagine there's lots that could be explored there. Uh, so in the meantime, questions, concerns, comments, complaints, uh, leave them for me in the comment section below or come see us on Gilded. There's a link to join the group Blackbird's Brew in the description box and you'd be very welcome there. But that will do it for now and I will see you next time. Bye.